he was a tall, yeah. handsome man, right? Very handsome. And a lot I of charisma. I always tell people he was ten times more handsome in person than he was in a picture. And he was the. I think the the things that I read that people say that he, even though he wasn't in the room when they were there, when he came in the room, he, even if they had their back to him, they could feel his presence. Now this sounds kind of spiritual and spooky, but it was real. I hear this all the time from all kinds of people. You just felt his presence, and. And my big thing with Elvis is that I love so much and I miss so much is his laughter. And he would get a twinkle in his eyes and he would just light up the whole room with his laughter. So That's amazing. Yeah. And uh, going back here, you, you actually also, as you said, you you were part of the 68 comeback special. We mm -hmm. know it as today. It was not the name of it back then. Right. But how did you uh, become a... a Audi in, a, in the audience uh, well, at that special? we found out he was going to do the special um, when we were in Memphis, but we didn't know. Everybody thought it was going to be a Christmas show. And so our girlfriend, Linda Webster, worked in RCA, at RCA in Los Angeles. And so we wrote and got tickets, and then we went down and stayed with her. We had a connection of Elvis fans so that when we went to L.A., we had places to stay. And so she got the tickets, and um, we had the Thursday night show and the Saturday night. Thursday night was sit-down show, and it was a half circle of stadium seats and then the stage over here. So that night, there were two separate shows, and I couldn't see as well. I could hear him, and I could see through the cameras and everything, but I didn't get to, you know, we... Um, so that night, I, I saw him, but it was like one of those so close but so far from paradise deals because you could hear him you could see him but you couldn't be close to him and so then saturday night we had tickets for that and we didn't know it was i th we thought it was going to be two shows and we thought oh they're going to make us leave after this and uh but he, they just kept him on and in between they were drying his suit out and and talking to him you know and elvis says hey it's getting embarrassing out here you know because he's trying to do tap dance he's trying to do tiptoes through the tulips and macarthur's park and trying to entertain people you know why he's waiting on the camera crews and so forth but it's like recently i said when i was thinking about that day in uh, June 29th, and I said, I realized I woke up in the middle of my dream that I had had for so many years to see Elvis perform live. Uh, there I was, and there he was. And people say, well, why weren't anybody screaming? Why wasn't there more action and everything? Well, we were all petrified that we got kicked out. Nobody, I'm, you know, if you're in a movie studio or a filming studio, you would, wouldn't think if that you could scream. You think you have to behave nice. And, yeah. Yeah. Let me know. You said something about they had to dry his suit in the middle of it. Or oh yeah, because it was leather dry suited. Yeah, so it dry and it had an inside to it, you know. Okay. But they would come and you know he go. It's getting hot out here, you know. So they stop sometimes in the middle of the uh, recordings after a song, and then they well sometimes they were just came out and sometimes they were adjusting his mic, but there were a couple of times he took him off. To yeah. dry him out a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And then he got the suit out off and. Uh, yeah, it got dried and, off. Yeah. And, again. and you said he, he did he come out and entertain while you were waiting for the camera crews to be ready. Did he what? I'm did sorry. he come out and entertain you also while he was waiting no, for the camera? No, he did that in between. They left. He he would record the the film, uh, the sh songs that he was going to do at that time, and then. Then they may have to set up something, take two or whatever. And during that time, he was trying to entertain us to make light of the whole situation. Because what we didn't know, he was as nervous as we were. Yeah. He hadn't been on stage in so long. And, and Mr. Um, Binder said, I was, wasn't going to go out on stage, you know. And so for us, we didn't know that. But there were, when I walked out, when the three of us walked in, and there was a big camera over the top of the stage. And when we th three walked in, Mr. I don't know if it was B Binder or Frank Finkel, because Mr. Finkel was the one in the white suit that was announcing. And 
I think it was Mr. Finkel that actually introduced us, um, did the introductions, and he, he said, this is Elvis Presley, you know. And so I can see me in the outtakes where the camera pans and I'm in there in the corner. Anyway, he pulled me over and said, here, sit here by the stage. And I thought, I'm not even going to have a good seat because that camera's in the way. And I had a fabulous seat. Thanks. And you just can't even imagine it, you know, that you're sitting there now. I met him, and now I'm watching him perform. Yeah. And next time. time people can try to see if they can find you among the audience when they see it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.